Oh, sounds like a harp. Ooh. Oh. What's up, y'all? Welcome to the Sam the Beard Guy channel. Um, thanks for watching this video. I recorded a Keyscape video, kind of an overview, high level of all the instruments. I skipped over a lot of them because there's like 15 million to pick from, but I did as much as I could, as high level as I could, um, played through as many as I could um, in a previous video about a week ago, which I'm gonna link um, right here if you wanna go watch that, if you wanna see just high level Keyscape. But I did get a lot of feedback on a lot of the piano stuff, and so I thought it'd be a great idea to make a separate video that I'm only going to play the acoustic pianos, so the uh, C7 and the, uh, I think, two uprights uh, that they have, that's all I'm going to play. No electric roads, no uh, any anything else. I'm just doing acoustic pianos. If you want to see that video uh, for the electric pianos and the clavs and stuff, leave a comment below, um, and I'll uh, if I get enough traction, I'll go ahead and make a separate separate video for that. But this, pian this video is just going to be pianos, so if you hate piano, don't watch it, or if you want to love piano, maybe watch it. I don't know, but uh, yeah, this video is all pianos. Uh, thank you all for the support on the last video. Uh, it, it was awesome to just see people asking questions. Uh, I got a lot of comments, so if you want to see more of this kind of content, I know every YouTube video you watch, it's like, please subscribe and smash that like button. It helps the YouTube, YouTube algorithm, uh, but it really does. So if you want to see more of this kind of content, uh, please like, subscribe, share, whatever you want to do uh, so I can keep justifying the time I spend uh, making these kind of videos. So, yeah, let's hop right in. So, like I said, this is going to be a much more granular, uh, in-depth video. So, I'm, I got Keyscape plug, uh, opened up. I'm not using any extra plugins. I know my last key, Keyscape video I used... Valhalla Ver, but I'm going to live inside of Keyscape uh, for this video. Um, so we're going to be in the acoustic pianos. None of this other stuff. No, none of these other things. So just an acoustic piano. Um, so let's uh, dive right on in. So yeah, the, the C7 Grand Piano. <laughs> This, I love this piano. I said it in my other video, but this piano just, as the young kids would say, slaps. So what I want to do is I'm actually going to record something, um, and then I'll play it back, and we'll kind of go through some of these settings and see how they sound. Thank you. 
still waking up and warming up, so pardon some sloppiness. <laughs> See, this is the bypass button. acting like a chorus it's kind of cool um i'll leave that down that reverb to my favorite reverb uh, and I'll, let me try and get the settings almost identical so mix this is gonna be a little bit harder to because I'm 0.172 up to one so I'm gonna assume that's like 17% so let's do I normally here will do like a mix of like 5% and like a one second let's turn that off and <laughs> All right, so let's do that. Let's do a 10% time, uh, 1.32 seconds. Shoot, I don't know how many milliseconds is on that. Yeah, I'm so bad at math. So if you're sitting there going, <laughs> yeah, it's obviously this. Uh, I'm not, yeah, I'm just not good at math. Um, I'm just, I'm just going to match the dials and see if that matters. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't think it's fair to compare those two, like, parameter to parameter. Um, but this reverb sounds good. I like it. straightforward you know I maybe maybe you'd be using this in here I imagine a lot of the EQ like differences you'd be looking for you'd just be using uh, be doing different patches instead um, Sometimes it's beneficial to use the uh, built-in EQ uh, and reverb and compressor in the plugin if um, you know your your computer's struggling to run this stuff because it takes off it offloads CPU not even offloads it's just you're not using additional CPU power opening up new plugins to run this stuff so um, yeah if your if your computer is struggling to just even spit these sounds out. Um, I'd look at maybe using some of these uh, plugin or settings inside of the plugin. 
Uh, for a compressor, let's see how good this compressor is. So it's definitely working. I mean, and it's hard to describe how it feels because you can't feel what I'm doing. It's not just louder. It's it's a little bit more glued together. So I don't know that I'd want to use, you know, kind of a more. I wouldn't say this is a super aggressive, um, you know, compressor. I wouldn't want to use too aggressive of a compressor if I'm, you know, playing. <laughs> that almost feels too smashed but I mean I think about all the church gigs I do and this is like the perfect you know This happened in the other video. I just get lost in just playing these sounds. Um, so the compressor, yeah, that sounds nice. It feels a little. I have the settings. I have it too right now. It's a little. I can feel the compression, but on the slower stuff. Um, I mean, if you're not careful with pianos, sometimes they're too thin for the setting you're trying trying to play in. And so using a compressor, even sometimes more aggressively on your slower stuff, um, it really helps. And it helps front of house engineers too when you're. Um, sending them out. A I actually got a comment uh, said to me a couple weeks ago, actually, that one of the piano settings I was using uh, for a, a like a conference thing, the front of house engineer told me he was like having to chase my signal a bunch because um, I tend to play really dynamically and, and for the setting we were in, it didn't work. And so I ended up throwing um, some multiband compression on it um, and he was happy with what I did. And making your front of house engineer happy is an undervalued thing um so i will say as i was playing through that so one of my favorite uh, features in a good piano library is uh, what they call their performance, but noise. I love, in certain settings, not all the time, but I love 
noise in pianos. It just it brings life to um, a patch that otherwise just might not be there. And so uh, let's play with these a little bit. Let me re-record. It's a little excessive, but I love that sound. I mean, and you hear that kind of, um, it's almost, I don't know if intimate's the right word, but there's like an intimate feel for me personally, like an intimate feel to like a lot of pedal noise. I don't know why. I've always thought like when you have a lot of pedal noise, I almost feel like the, the piano is just kind of like getting like glued together and brought together and... It's just, I don't know why. I mean, maybe I'm the only one in the world that thinks that, but when I hear a lot of pedal noise, it just feels intimate to me. And in the right setting, uh, I mean, it wouldn't work for this. That feels weird. But in this setting... this down a little bit. It's just so nice. Uh, so, so now let's uh, let's talk about this denoise, uh, and I'm pulling up the manual over here because uh, it addresses the denoise uh, feature. Uh, Although there are some amazing noise reduction technologies available, removing noise is never a perfect science. We found that processing the pristine recordings in Keyscape to remove noise caused them to lose a certain magic, even when treated with the finest uh, noise reduction tools available. Like many of the slight imperfections in any instrument, it is actually part of the instrument's character. That is one of the most important points about um, any kind of plug-in uh, that you use is the imperfections of an instrument make that instrument what it is. And so a grand piano is not a, you know, there's imperfections to that instrument. And so, you know, what they're saying here is, you know, they decided to leave a little of those, a little of those imperfections in uh, the sound sources because uh, if you take away too much of it, now it starts to feel fake and inauthentic. And so, um, I mean, so that's what this denoise right here is. So right now the denoise is off. So no denoising has happened. Yet. And I want to turn off. I want to chill on this because it's. So you hear that like airy, that that airy crackle. Maybe if I crank this up a little bit. listening to laptop speakers you might not be able to hear it, but it's there now as I move to mild I mean it still sounds great and a lot of it is because you're or a being it you're hearing what isn't uh you're hearing what it sounds like when you remove it but I love that noise in there That sounds great. All right, so let's uh, let's go through some of these. Yeah, so feel or image or tweaking. Yeah, 
Yeah, so I've got this manual pulled up so I can kind of read what um, Spectrosonic specifically says so I don't make up things that don't make sense. Um, but uh, the tweak set, uh, section here, specifically the feel, I mean, image, y'all know it. It's either mono or stereo. That doesn't need any explanation. Um, if it does, go look up mono and stereo. Uh, so tweak, um, feel. So what the manual says, the feel section, look, look at it, uh, yeah. uh, natural, gentle, or tight are subtle settings that allow you to control the amount of air before the sample is triggered. And then the uh, REL transition, which I'm assuming stands for release. Yeah, release transition. This control sets the transition time from the, from the sustain to the release noise. Once a key is released in the release time, this control sets the length of the release noise. So, like a lot of things in life, I don't understand what that means. So I'm gonna use my ears to figure it out. A lot of my, I'm gonna be able to. Get into this velocity preset here in a bit, but this is hard to describe without you actually feeling it. This is a nice, this is like a what I'd call like a one percent thing, you know. It's like this is the kind of stuff that makes libraries um, better than other libraries. Uh, I mean, this is so subtle, but it's... And it's, it's hard to describe. I mean, what it says is correct. It's a subtle setting that allows you to control the amount of air before the sample is triggered. So it's almost like, again, it's hard to explain because you can't feel it, but there's a like a small, subtle space, like as you're like pressing into the keys, or on the extremely tight one, it's like, it's just grabbing your fingers and playing back. It's real subtle. I mean, natural feels uh, natural. I, I can't imagine myself using tight ever um, because if I, I would imagine if I'm using the feel tight, I'm already altering the piano in a way that feels weird and I probably wouldn't even, I don't know. That doesn't make sense as I say it out loud, but natural, even gentle feels good. So let's compress her back on because I like it. I just want to make sure the compressor wasn't um, affecting how I actually felt this setting. So, um, sustain, let's see if it addresses the, uh, sustain, because I'm curious if it does. I mean, Yeah, so um, selecting the if, uh, the pedal section is located on the yeah, set, selecting the effects button routes the pedal noise through the effects along with the sustains and release notes. So yeah, the pedal noise, which is the pedal noise over here, is getting sent through uh, my understanding through the effects, which is the reverb, EQ, and compression. Um, it makes sense to leave that on. However, I could see where. Let's turn the, uh, this stuff up. It's there. And my understanding is this.
Yeah, so... This performance noise is not getting sent through the effects. And so when I turn it back on, it's louder because the effects I have is making stuff, specifically the compression and even the EQ, like high boost I've got cranked, that if that pedal noise is going through those those process, the effects processors, effects processing, yeah. Cool, that's a nice touch. I mean, that's, that is a, uh, I can actually see myself using that uh, if I want a little bit of pedal noise in what I'm doing but I've got these kind of settings on it and it's I'm specifically thinking about front of house engineers. It's like driving them crazy. They can hear there's like too much pedal noise. This is a way to almost turn, um, like get a lot of pedal noise, but it turned down where it was some of this, I mean, maybe if you like turn this down to zero, like adjust it here, it's going to be the same as turning it off here. Um, maybe that's just to taste and uh, however you feel like doing it, but I can imagine that being, um, a good way to appease some of my pickier front of house friends, um, even in the studio, uh, damper. Um, yeah, this is just, you're setting a button, which is, uh, the damper doesn't happen above a certain note. I can't imagine myself using that unless you're, using like a one keyboard for multiple instruments than I could. But then again, I'd probably be setting that up. I'm thinking like main stage. When I use main stage, I would just set that up in main stage, not in here. So um, settings, uh, I mean, I would, 32 is probably good. However, I mean, if you're playing a lot of... I don't know that I can get 32 voices. Um, but let me read. Let me read you exactly what it says. Um, oh, I just found this section right here. So the sustained realism. I'll read what that says. Um, this will reload the patch without including the pedal down samples, reducing the use of system resources by half. Uh, while the pedal down samples make a big difference in recording environments, when you're in live situations with other instruments in the mix, you will find this to have little sonic impact. In other words, you probably won't miss it. That's actually a great point. Um, there's a lot of stuff. If you're playing with the band, there's going to be certain settings that just don't matter that are just going to get lost in the mix. So if you are playing a lot of live stuff and you're running into some CPU issues, I mean, this might be a way to come back and you know get rid of that um, is just unclick that. And it's going to reload. Yep, like I said, it's going to reload the samples uh, without... The down pedal, yeah. Which, I mean, that's, that's so subtle. I, mean, I imagine what it's saying is it just has one, it's just a pedal up sample. They recorded the sound of the pedal coming up and they're using that. Yeah, they're just using less. Um, yeah. That's a nice little touch too. It does say it's only available in the C7. So in these other, uh, oh, in the other like upright pianos, it's not going to be there. Um, so yeah, limit voices. So um, if you've spent any time in, in, in you know uh, sound libraries like this, you understand what voices are. But if you don't, uh, Keyscape allows up to 64 notes to be played simultaneously. You can adjust the maximum number of notes with the voices menu on the settings page. High values can put tremendous demand on the CPU, so reducing the voices limit signif can significantly reduce CPU usage. Reducing voices to 16 or 10 or even fewer is an early action you should take to eliminate CPU overload. So if you're having issues with CPU overload, things like the pedal, even the voices, uh, this is saying I think the voices is the first place to go. So if you're having issues loading uh, or just playing this live, uh, you know, voices is a good place uh, to look. Uh, first, uh, I don't know why you'd be using bending on the piano, so I won't talk about that. Let me read what it says for thinning, because uh, it's actually also a cool. So the thinning button, 
if you want to conserve memory by reducing the number of round robins and velocity switched samples that are loaded with the patch. The lock icon next to the thinning button will maintain thinning for each patch you select in Keyscape. So, uh, yeah, it does exactly what it says. If you want to conserve memory by reducing the number of round robins and velocity switched samples. So again, if you need to reduce uh, how much this plugin is taxing your computer, um, this is another uh, place to look. I don't really have that problem, so um, I'm not using that. But that is a nice feature. Again, some of the cheaper piano libraries out that out there are not going to have this option, and so this just speaks to why Keyscape is so freaking sweet. There's just all these little. Even when the manual says this is a subtle thing we added, but it's there. It, those things make a difference, and they they add to the the heftier price tag, but. You know, I said it in the other video, this is one of the best purchases I've ever made, and it's for this kind of stuff right here. Um, last thing we'll go over is velocity. So, again, I'm, you know, I'm assuming if you're watching this, you're probably in an in intermediate, you know, level of understanding of this, this world, but, you know, velocity basically have zero, you have 128 values that this is going to register how hard you're pressing the keyboard. And so this is like an X equals Y graph initially by default. And you can change as you get from zero up to 127, is it giving you a flat equal response or is it kind of elevating or almost curving some of those um, velocity values? I have it set to here. Um, I'm actually experimenting. I got this new uh, Studio Logic SL88 keyboard. I, I had the uh, Yamaha, I think M88, and it didn't fit in my keyboard tray. Like this fits. Um, but I was a dummy and, and didn't look at the specs for the Yamaha and this wouldn't fit. So the other key skip video, I'm using that because I hadn't taken it back and returned it into Guitar Center yet. But I'm like still feeling this keyboard out, but it feels a little mushy to me in some areas. So I'm kind of raising the velocity curve a little bit just to give me a little bit more response. Um, you can't hear that on your end, but that, that's kind of what I'm doing here is just trying to figure out where a good like sweet spot is. Um, but they actually preload velocity responses for all these keyboards. And I'm assuming these are going to be the more common ones. Uh, like, I don't see mine on here because mine's not as common. Uh, like, I could have loaded up the... Maybe I could have loaded up mine. Maybe they don't have that. Uh, yeah, whatever. So, um, yeah, each one of these keyboards has their own kind of response just the way they naturally feel. And so they've gone in here and um, given you some preloaded uh, velocity curves to just start with. And I'm assuming if you don't like it, I mean, you can obviously tweak it. Um, and then you can lock this in. Just like with the thinning feature, you can lock this in. So if I were to load a new patch, I'm assuming it's gonna keep this here. So um, that's an awesome feature. Because again, some libraries are gonna make you redo this. So uh, that is an awesome, thing they added so that is let's listen to this one more time all right one thing we did not go over was the tape plugin so i'm going to kind of tweak some of these settings Again, so, you know, if you're not familiar with the more analog recording world, um, tape saturation kind of adds this, like, warm-sounding distortion uh, to the overall uh, just sound. And so as I A-B this, I'll try and get a comp of it.
honestly the only way to really... I was trying to like keep it at the same volume so you could hear it, because sometimes a change in volume can uh, artificially or not not quite it's not quite honest on like what's actually happened this happens a lot with compressors where people will just you know turn the input or output volume up or knob up and go oh it's like compressing it's like no you just turned up the volume it's not actually like you know gluing stuff together so i was trying to keep this the same um it's kind of hard to hear i mean that feels warmer but it's also louder so um, hopefully you can hear that, but you know, it is a little bit warmer. I, you know, I probably wouldn't use this on a normal piano, um, cause I actually have a vinyl piano down here, which I, if I wanted to get more of a tape sound, I'd either use actually the vinyl, <laughs> uh, think about it. It's very taped out. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'd probably just use a tape plug-in because most tape plugins probably have a little bit more versatility, but again, you know, I mean, Keyscape, they can't do everything. Like, they're not a, a, a tape plugin manufacturer, so um, it, it's not a big deal that they only have these three options, but there are definitely tape plugins out there that have, you know, 15 million knobs that you can actually work with and do stuff with. So, man, overall, I've said this a million times. I said it in the first video, and I'll say it in this one. If... Keyscape only came with this piano. That is an amazing, incredible buy. I love this sample library. I think it's, it's, I mean, top three, top five all time plugin purchases and best piano plugin I've bought in a long time. And so I love it. If you are on the fence, man, hopefully, even just that, we're going to keep going, but even just me going through just this one setting we've got all these left to go but even just that one setting it's it's just an incredibly emulated recorded produced piano so i am in love with this it is it is such a miss that i spent so long not getting it. i mean the the title of my last video was i sat on it too long or, or something uh like that don't sit it on don't sit on it like i did um it's it's a heftier price tag, but it's heftier for a reason, and this this will get you a lot of mileage. So, let's uh, go through some of these other ones. Um, I won't dive into too much of these extra settings because they, for the most part, my understanding, uh, they're the same for almost all of them. So, I don't need to do some. Oh, the character actually, we can go over the character. So let's do that. Um, so. something okay that's cool let's get see if it's actually changing any of these settings but I don't think it is
All right, so I'll read you what the manual says about um, this character uh, thing right here. A character selectors choose between overall tone choices preset for that particular model, which allows for unprecedented versatility. Um, so uh, let's go. It references the ballad. So let's go over here to the ballad. Pure. Let's actually record a ballad, though. So pure lets you hear the unchanged natural tone of the model. Soft gives you a mellower tone. Dark removes some of the high end sparkle. I can hear that. Studio gives you a clarity that cuts through a mix. Warm has a fuller, fuller tone. Clear and staged gives you a brighter tone. And then hard is great for rock, pop, and country. That's cool. Yeah, it's a nice little touch. Um, they don't have that on the C7 Grand, but it has it, I'm pretty sure, on all these. So the color shift, the samples are pitch shifted up and down and then transpose, transposition compensated, creating, creating interesting harmonic changes. That's cool. I wonder how that... So if you don't understand what it's doing, um, they're shifting, I don't, I'd almost say it like this. It's like, imagine a singer sings in one key and then they pitch shift it down to another. Uh, it's like harmonically correct, but there's some natural, um, just as I call it, color shift. There's a shift in tone as you start to modulate stuff around. And so that's not exactly what they're doing, but that's a good example. <laughs> sweet the cool thing about just throwing a knob like this onto something is you have a million different uh just versatile sounds uh, at your disposal because you have a, a knob that's like just shifting how things are transposed and transposition compensated that's a nice touch way to go come on all right so we won't so now that y'all got a feel for kind of what's in you know here uh they've again my understanding i'll you know, double check, but they're pretty much the same. The one thing that's really changing is the character uh, option becomes available once you get outside of the regular grand. But so it's a. Uh...
probably half the people still watching this video stop watching this because I might attempt to sing like Evanescence. That's fine. Yeah. See, this is a miss on my part. I, I've gone through these and never even realized the character tone can really change. Oops, how some of this like sounds. Like one of my biggest complaints with this was it felt. But you get in here and change some of this, like, it kind of takes away some of the stuff I didn't like on this patch. And I don't, I don't, it's not that I don't like it because it's like poorly made. It's just not a sound that I'm using a lot, but I can see where that is really uh, used. Softest, I said it in my last video, this is my probably favorite setting. sound. I just love it. So good. So good. All right, so bright. Oh yeah. Uh
uh, is a like a fantastic like jazz feel to it. Um, I feel like a little loose. All right, so next up we have. Let's see here. This is gonna be a long video. Okay, we're an hour in. You know, this is for the most part uncut. I have to. Uh, every 30 minutes re-hit record for my Sony camera um, but uh, yeah I'm just running yeah, I'm up to 57 minutes on OBS so it's going to be a long one if you're still watching that is awesome uh, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button if you like what I have done so far Rich Ballad <laughs> Sounds nice, uh, color tone. That almost sounds like a harp. Ooh. Oh. So inspired by that sound. Holy crap. Almost cried a little bit. That is so pretty. It almost sounds like I don't know if dulcitone is the right, but just that like kind of like a muted Glock. I just want to make a whole album <laughs> with that sound. That is so awesome, man. Ooh, this one is the money right here.
to see what this does. Oh. Dang, that's underwhelming. I was hoping it'd do something like it did on the other one. goes uh. yeah I'm loving this color shifting I didn't I've never played around with this before and there's some really cool, like, chances for some really cool tonal stuff.
cool, cool, cool. That's bright. My mind's kind of blown with this character stuff. I just feel like there's now 75 different additional pianos to choose from. It's crazy. Forward, club.
cool. Why did I forget that? Yep. And then... Yeah. This is the one that I was talking about earlier that's taped out. Cool. Yeah, so those are the uh those are the grants. I mean we spent I mean an hour and seventeen minutes in it. So that is uh it's pretty sick. Um so yeah, let's move on to the uprights. Before I actually move on, I wanted to say one thing about the C seven because it includes this in the manual and I think it's worth uh, just talking about yeah so this outstanding custom modified instrument belongs to renowned Los Angeles piano, te piano technician Jim Wilson part of what makes it unique to, uh, part of what makes this C7 is unique is that it is fitted with Renner Blue Point hammers with Weikert 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 Wickard felt, um, a special piano hammer felt used during the pre-Cold War golden age of Steinway. This rare long fiber virgin wool felt, which came, which became available again after the reunification of Germany, contributes to the hammers producing a wider tonal spectrum. Jim spent many weeks mani manicuring the piano voicing for this project, which includes the fine adjustment of the hammer felt density using special needles and a variety of techniques to achieve the greatest possible dynamic range and color palette. The tone, dynamics, and sustain this of this particular instrument are astounding, as we've seen. Uh, so yeah, I thought that was just an interesting little uh, tidbit of info, which I did not know beforehand. It's, it's nice to know uh, how these things are made. So um, it's the opposite of... Uh, when you look up like cooking recipes and it's telling you like the backstory and it's like, I just want to make my tacos. I don't need to know where this came from. Um, it's the opposite of this here. It's definitely interesting to know uh, where and how this stuff was created. So wing upright piano. Let me uh, just do what I just did and read, uh, you know, what it says about it and how it's created far from the common specimen this rare wing upright piano from 1900 is one of the most beautiful and unusual vertical pianos ever made. This century-old upright grand is a strong, warm sound with gorgeous sustain, instantly reminiscent of the turn of the 20th century. We meticulously c captured all the quirks and unique nuances of this remarkable upright piano with multiple mics. Uh, looking downward, you, I thought this is interesting. Looking downward, you immediately immediately see something unusual. Instead of the two or three pedals usually found on upright pianos, this one has four. 
Uh, the two pedals on the left control the instrumental attachments, a mechanical factory option that permitted the player to, in the words of one of their print ads from 1903, imitate perfectly the tones of the mandolin, guitar, zither, 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 harp, and banjo. Um, so the first pedal tremolo brings a mechanism fitted with metal balls on springy bla blades into contact with the string. So when the hammer strikes the strings, their vibrations cause the balls to bounce, similar to a marxophone. Um, and then the second pedal is labeled orchestra. It lowers a bar fitted with small metal rings suspended from felt strips, positioning the strings between the hammers and the strings. The hammer hits the, the rings, which then hits the strings, transforming it into a classic tack piano sound. Uh without destroying the hammers. This incredible, the incredibly inspiring sounds this instrument made for us are, des are destined to be uh, a favorite of our film composer users. So yeah, let's dive into these uprights. All right. So uprights. That sounds lovely. Yeah, I can play that forever. Tremolo. This is that tremolo pedal it was talking about. Let's read that again so I understand what it Metal balls on springy played blades in contact with the strings. So when the hammer strikes the string, their vibrations cause the balls to bounce. That's cool. That's really cool. Obviously, they're so they're only above the C uh, D three. This is a, a
Well, yeah, my, my honky tonk playing chops are off. that part it's not even the right way to play that song It's kind of cool if I turn this off. It's nice. Yeah. Let's see here. It's just there's some cool stuff in here. I want to go back and just play more.
I love that. All right. Uh, yeah. Wing upright, you know, not as, um, quality same. Um, you know, I, I think there's more, you know, using an upright has more of a, uh, just a nuanced, you know, specific, uh, usage. Uh, the C7 is definitely, you know, the, the bread and butter, I think of the acoustic world here, uh, just because you're probably using that more. Um, and maybe the world you live in, you're using the uprights more, but at least in my world, the C7 is more so what I'm using, but I mean, this sounds great. It's the best upright piano I've played on. Um, and I have, um, a handful of upright libraries. And so this is one of the, uh, this is the best one I've played on as far as the upright world. Um, so let's go down to the last uh, version or the last acoustic piano that we have, which is the Wing Tack Piano. And I'm going to read this. Although the exact origin is unknown, Tack Piano started showing up in the late 1800s and early 1900s by inserting thumb tacks or small nails in the felt surface of the hammers. The sound of the hammers hitting the strings is transformed to a much brighter, brittle sound. Slightly out of tune, honky tonk is part of the Tack Piano's charm. Um. Wait, am I reading the right one? Yeah, I am. Yeah, so this one also has uh, the four pedals uh, with, you know, the, yeah, the, the tremolo, like metal ball, springy played one, and then the uh, second pedal brings in the tacks. Uh, which in this case is the lowering of, bar, lowering of a bar fitted with small metal rings suspended from felt strings, positioning the rings between the hammers and the strings. Is that the same as... Yeah, it's the same. They call it... They call it orchestra. Okay. Oh, you've heard the unique sound of attack piano played on numerous pop and rock hits as well, including the Captain and... Ten Tenilli's Love Will Keep Us Together, Queen Killers Queen, The Rolling Stones Wild Horses, and The Beach Boys Hit Good Vibrations. Other notable tack piano users and in users include Emerson, Lake and Palmer, Burt Bacharach, Fleetwood Mac, Elvis Costello, Neil Young, Ben Folds, Coldplay, Ray Manzarek of the Doors, and film composer and record producer John Bryan. Uh, perhaps the most famous use is by the Beatles in their song Rocky Raccoon. Rocky Raccoon. Um, so, well, this thing has gotten some mileage on it. So, Let's hop in. How does that sound different than... Oh, yeah, it is a lot brighter. use that one but it's nice uh, let's do some of these Nice. 
cool. Uh, I don't feel like it's loading. Oh, it is. Yeah, it's got the uh, the slow. I guess the the metal balls are um, like moving slowly. It's kind of obnoxious to do it that quick, but if I were to do like. Oof, I like that. Come on. It's nice. And then this. These last couple, the Forsaken, so those are definitely, uh, well, not the Forsaken, so tremolo, but the Desolate. Those are definitely very nuanced. Um, I don't know that I'd use those a ton. Um, but yeah, those are super cool. Yeah, so the two uprights. Uh, I, I wouldn't find myself using the wing tack uh, as much. Um, and that's not because it's poorly recorded. I just, what I do, it's, 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 that's not going to really find its way into my, uh, arsenal too much. The wing upright though. That piano is sick. I love that piano. Um, so yeah, I love the wing upright. I wouldn't find myself using the wing tack a ton, 
But the C7 and the wing upright, whew, come on. Um, they are, they're, they're, they're nice. <laughs> so, uh, excuse me. What a long video. I think we're, I don't think we hit two hours, but we're, we're up there. So I know it's long. It's definitely a longer video, but that just goes to show you how much stuff there is in this, in these libraries to just go through. If you're still watching at this point, way to go. There's no reason not to buy this, uh, this piano, especially if you're still watching. It should hopefully kind of already be, hopefully I helped you make a decision because this piano is, is, uh, more, uh, than what you need. It's just, it's got everything that you'd want. Um, and we just went through the acoustics for, I mean, closer, closer to two hours. Uh, we did acoustics. There's electrics, hybrids, claps. Uh, I mean, there's tons of other things. So if you want to see a video with uh, some of those other instruments, like the uh, specifically the electric pianos, which I kind of want to do, if you want to see that, uh, let me know in the comments below. Um, I probably won't do one if, you know, I don't feel like I want to have any traction with it. Uh, but if that's something that y'all want to see, uh, let me know and uh, I'll get that recorded. Uh, so yeah, thank y'all for watching. I'll see y'all later.